Hi, Mr. Fleury, good to have you with us tonight. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate making the time. Uh, for viewers who are watching this evening and who don't live in Ottawa, you represent an area that was really at the heart of everything that unfolded. Can, can you explain to us what that was like? Well, that's right. I represent, uh, if you've been in Ottawa, I represent east of the canal. So it includes lower town Sandy Hill. Most people at home would, who visited Ottawa know the Byward Market or know the Rideau Centre. That's the area I represent. And obviously earlier this year during the occupation, it was uh, it was chaos. We residents who live in the area, uh, it was nonstop noise. It was nonstop uh, fumes coming from the large rigs, which were located along Rideau Street at Sussex and Rideau, and uh, it bit anywhere and everywhere in the Byward Market, as well as the number of of, uh, of aggressions that uh, that were happening in the community for for seniors, for folks who couldn't access their bus, for business operators. As you know, there's about a thousand small businesses along Rideau Street and the Byron Market. Many were closed uh, because of uh, of the threats, and some some who've opened uh, had a number of, of challenging interactions with those who came to Ottawa. Speaking of challenging interactions, I mean, your, your family uh, was subject to, to those as well, and so much so, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you actually had to move your family out of where they were living because you became targets. That's right. Uh, if you recall, the, the convoy arrived in Ottawa on uh, the Friday at the end of January, and following that first weekend, we all expected uh, the, the protesters to leave. That's what usually happens in Ottawa. We're used to having close to 100 protests a year, and it's usually what we see. Um, unfortunately, as it, it, the story unfolded and, and many days later, I, I was one of the first voices that said we need to go after the funding so that we dismantle this, this the, the, the chaos that was happening. And uh, folks showed up at my house and, and threatened us. And as you know, I was living the chaos on the ground for my community. I had to get back there and also my responsibility as a young, as a young dad. So had to move the family elsewhere and uh, for the period and uh, re refocus to, uh, to, to bring together the stakeholders, to bring together the city and the authorities to facilitate those conversations uh, over, over what was a, over a two-week period. Let me ask you a little bit about the role of the city and, and local police forces, because that has certainly been a focus of much of the testimony so far. And, and today we saw a reiteration of, of something we learned yesterday, which is that basically both the city and the police were warned that this was not a temporary thing. For example, by the Hotel Association, which said, hey, people are booking rooms for 30 days. Uh, what does that tell you? And in, in were you aware that the city and, and local police had that knowledge? I was aware. The uh, the hotel association isn't it have a, has a lot of properties in my area, high profile properties with the Shadow Laurier, the West End, the Andes, and I'm in, in regular conversation with the hotel association, who gave us the warnings. And you know that's only one of the stakeholders. There were many, including the media, who were covering the various situations happening around the country and uh, the convoy arriving, and, and even speaking to those who are arriving in our city and their intentions not to leave. Um, you know, I, I, we, can, we can take different segments and different periods. I, I think there are sort of two to three fundamentals there that went really, around, really array and, and created the environment we were, we were in, which was the first decision by the police chief not to limit truck movement uh, or to, to not limit truck movement on truck routes. And retain them to truck routes. If that, if we saw that, because we've had a number of protests since, and every time police are controlling movement of vehicles, it does limit the impacts on communities. And then the number of, of interactions between who was responsible, like in, in many ways, I've unfortunately had to live through a number of, of uh, crisis here in Ottawa, including the sinkhole on Rito when we were building our LRT, including a number of, of floods, of uh, power outages, and a recent derecho which affected Ottawa. And every time you have this white table with city officials, with the mayor, uh, and, and with the communication teams explaining what is the situation, what are the actions, and, and sharing the plan, that didn't happen in this case. And, and I just throwing it all onto police's responsibility and uh, forgetting or, or, or not using the tools that we have as a municipality, including bylaw services, uh, the, the, the various uh, codes, including the fire code, 
parking uh, restrictions and so on, to me, they weren't effectively used early enough to prevent some of the, the situation that unfolded. Why do you think that was? Because that, that is the subject of a lot of scrutiny throughout the testimony so far. I mean, you're right. Those um, mechanisms have been utilized. Those tools have been utilized in other instances, uh, in other issues that, that have occurred here, but they weren't in this time. I think, it's, I think you, you, you can say it pretty objectively, right? <laughs> they, they, they weren't. Uh, what, what failed there? A number of things. I think the decision by the, the police chief not to allow uh, right. trucks in, in those downtown streets was problem one. Problem two was this, the city being caught in the command center uh, of the authority of police and then being so focused on, on the foundation of Parliament Hill and, and Wellington Street. I'm a local city councillor. The impacts I felt were in our residential streets, not on, on Parliament Hill, not, not to minimize what was happening there, but local police forces like the Ottawa police are paid by local taxpayers. And in this case, the local, the local DNA was lost in that space and the attention was all given to Wellington, Wellington, Wellington Street and the red zone and, and left uh, the community abandoned th through that period. So there's a number of why didn't this lever happen? Why didn't that happen? I think, you know, there's a, a real big conversation to have in Ottawa uh, in, in our role as a, a city, but also in our, our role as a capital. And how do we ensure that future demonstrations don't turn into be occupation? And how do we make sure that uh, demonstrations aren't occupying the time of our local police force. I think those are, I hope the inquiry and I hope that the commissioner looks at those aspects. I know they have a, a bigger mandate relating to the use of the Emergencies Act, but uh, for us locals, we really should re-envision the, the, the governance in the capital, uh, the policing in the capital, and, and do a, a real deep lessons learned of what not to do uh, we have a responsibility to residents and businesses to be safe and to be able to live in, in Ottawa. And, and uh, as we saw through the early parts of this year, that certainly uh, uh, was, not, um, was, was not appropriately addressed and, and created the environment that we're in today in front of an inquiry. And just really quickly, Mr. Fleury, I'm running out of time, unfortunately, but jumping off that point that you made, the role of the province in all of that as well, uh, under a lot of scrutiny during especially today's testimony, a lot of back and forth between the Prime Minister, for example, and the Mayor, uh, some accusations that the Premier was, uh, quote unquote, hiding from his responsibility. Would you like to hear uh, the, from the Premier or other provincial politicians uh, in this inquiry right now? They haven't been asked to appear. Should they be? They should. Uh, municipalities in Ontario are the creation of the provinces. They give us the mandates around uh, the, the rules and also the tools that we have as municip municipalities. Um, just having the OPP uh, at that inquiry is, is certainly not enough. There's a number of responsibilities from local ministers to uh, the attorney general to, um, to the premier. And I think it's part of the symptom in Ottawa that folks think we're a we're a capital, a federal precinct. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're a city under the jurisdiction of Ontario in a capital. And so for me, all three levels uh, should really testify and, and share their perspective and, and really ultimately uh, do a deep dive and a lessons learned exercise so that Ottawa as a city uh, can thrive for the future and, and not have to worry constantly about this risk. Okay, Mr. Fleury, Fleury rather, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.